everyone. My name is Bella Abrams. I'm the IT director from the University of Sheffield. And Hi. Steve Thompson, head of digital within the marketing and comms function. Now, we were dogged in to come here um, by our uh, digital learning team um, because Fiona was looking for IT directors that care about accessibility. And I really do, which is one of the reasons why I'm here and I want to talk about it. So we're going to split it. Steve's going to talk about what we've been doing because I've only been at the University of Sheffield since January. So um, I'm learning about HE and some of the things um, are making my hair curl and other things that um, I, I would have thought would have taken place in institutions on a scale of Sheffield just aren't. So there's quite a lot that I want to talk about in that context um, from, a, from a Sheffield point of view. But we're going to start from the beginning. Yeah. If that's all right. So as you can see, it all started a little bit unknown, to be honest. I think I got a random email where I spotted something about web accessibility, so I started looking into it, um, realised that nobody else around the university really had a clue either, um, and then started thinking, well, it's more than a web access accessibility statement, um, and then really thinking, okay, is this a BLE? So started talking to colleagues, is this, does this include things like SAP that we might use to for job application processes? Does this include, I think, much like Edinburgh, the thousands of websites that we do or don't know about, etc.? So inevitably, um, that led to the inevitable panic. Um, and to be honest, it was it was as much it was less my panic, but the panic just generally around the university from lots of random individuals and going to conferences inevitably and just getting bombarded with information. I'm sure it was a bit similar for, for many others. So actually a lot of what we were doing was trying to temper that and actually put a bit of a structure and a plan in place. And then really my job was to find some areas of the university, aside from myself, to take some ownership of this, because it was very obvious that it wasn't something that just one area could do. Um, so that was why, in essence, I took it to a thing. We ended up with an information management group. Which, yes, which, born, which was originally born out of how do we deal with GDPR. And to be honest, I wanted to avoid a situation like that and all the panic that ensued. So luckily, I took a paper that explained what was going on. And then out of that, you um, took Put an hand up. Yes. Um, so that's how we got a little bit of interest. And then I think very similar to yourselves, um, we ended up doing some work. But the harsh reality is what we've done particularly at Sheffield anyway, I would say is all very basic. I think in terms of being, I think it's what we've done historically and even what we're doing now is pretty basic. I think when you see, it's quite um, overwhelming actually when you see the number of documents and just actually how poorly we were doing things. Um, so even now what we've put in place, um, I would say it's still a little bit basic. So, you know, we're doing everything much like people have described to get ourselves um, responding to the legislation, put together a user group, um, began, we're beginning the journey really actually to, to become de compliant. We won't be fully, I think, by Monday, but we're certainly getting there. And we've just got a few more things to do. We've put Ally in and other tools. It's been great because it's identified things like, oh, actually, lots of people across the university use actually the university standard, more external facing templates for delivering um, internal content as well. So we've been able to update them, um, we're already talking to procurement, etc. So we are cracking on with being compliant. So I'm going to take over at this point, because we're at a pivotal moment in my view, which is a bit like GDPR, when you kind of think, right, everyone's done their chicken chasing, everyone's sat down, there's a lot of documents that list where things are, and you could breathe on Monday when your statement's up and lawyers have said it's okay, we've done it. Um, and I think that that would be a massive lost opportunity because the truth of this is this isn't about accessibility and meeting legislation. It's actually designing for our students and our students are the ones who feel it feels missing when you talk about putting a statement up on the website, when you talk about um, getting things ready for Monday, it actually misses the point, which is at the moment, our services are inadequate for quite a large group of our users, whether they've got a disability whether they've got other inclusive needs. If we just say that we've done this for legislation reasons, then that is just a failure, I think. So that's why we wanted to come and talk today, because we have, I think we've done everything that we should have done, but I don't feel particularly excited by it. We're going through a list of actions and it's one of those things. But actually, I think that the university is at a moment where we can encourage other people to see this as an important thing. So taking it out of the IT domain and thinking it more about the products and services that we deliver. 
So our plan is to do something a whole lot different. So Jonathan's talked about loads of things that Edinburgh are doing, which really chimed with me from the Sheffield point of view. Huge amounts of website, Blackboard, loads of academics who, who, if we put accessibility into their lap in the way that we could have done, are just going to see it as another chore. But actually, what we want to do, and, and we're not doing this yet, so I think this is one of the reasons we wanted to come today and kind of in an open spirit of learning to see what you guys are doing. We want to actually start saying to people, usability is really important, servicing our students is really important, designing services up front and having accessibility by default as opposed to something that we do afterwards. The other interesting point that I hadn't considered today is we are a Google university. And so we cannot right now take advantage of all of the things that Microsoft have just presented. And that's added a whole other dimension of stress for me. So, so that's another thing that we're going to have to consider. So why have Steve and I come today? Because I'm genuinely passionate about accessibility and usability for our students and our staff. And actually, the other thing is that we've got a new vice chancellor and we're recasting the university strategy as being important in the city as well. And the steps that you just showed from um, Kent also really chimed with me. I have a, a friend who's visually impaired and we have a flagship road that goes from our tram stop to our flagship engineering building and she cannot walk down that road without feeling like she's going to fall because the paving is in such a way it feels like there are steps where there are not so she's in a different situation but that's the type of thing that I think it, it behooves a university to consider because that's actually that's not a university street that's a Sheffield street but we've paved it as part of the planning for the the engineering building I think that's absolutely vital I'm lucky to be in a position where I can influence this from a university strategy point of view and I think that that's also the really key point about this we're not just saying let the IT director go off and she can do a load of stuff around the GDPR or digital will think about it that is actually about the service that we're providing to students it's student experience it's why we would want students to come and choose to study at the University of Sheffield so that's one of the things that we're really passionate about um, one of our most important users is Lord Blunkett and um, I met Lord Blunkett the other day. Um, he's a bit of a hero of mine because my background's in uh, digital teaching and learning. I used to work at Learn Direct, which was UFI Limited back in the noughties. And Lord Blunkett and Gordon Brown set that up as a way to do online learning maths and English for people that had not done maths and English to the extent that they wanted to at school. So I went and kind of I had a couple of drinks. And I, um, I shook his hand and told him about the reason that I was the IT director at the university was because he'd set up an IT company in Sheffield. And he shook my hand and said, that is lovely, excellent, sort your website out. <laughs> so having feedback from Lord Blunkett is really important. But he's someone who is a visiting professor at the University of Sheffield. And if he struggles to use our services, what's it like for our students? And he doesn't hold back with the criticism. And we should make sure that we take that into account. So that's why I wanted to put that slide up. So what is truly different about what we're talking to do? Probably not that different from what you guys are saying in the room, because I think it's also similar to what Ben was saying. You guys are here because you're interested. The thing that we're going to do, in my view, that's different for the University of Sheffield is that we're going to ensure that all of our stakeholders understand why this is so important. So almost not to use the term accessibility, to use the term about usability, design, right services for our students. We want to do co-design, and that co-design is with the students and is with the staff who are affected, but it's also with specialists as well. I think the other thing that I've noticed since I've started in the HE sector is we often try and do things ourselves when there are people who um, know better ways of doing it that, that we could bring in. We are going to do collaboration across key departments. Steve's already talked about our working group. We do have um, a disability and accessibility service who are embedded heavily into this. We've got the um, digital education unit, we've got marketing, we've got comms, we've got all of the digital teams. But the key people that we really need to engage are the academics, and we want that to be not in the, the list of new things that academics have got to do. So um, I've really been interested in what some people have been saying about how you can encourage people to kind of um, encourage it in their workload. Long term, my aim is to have usability, accessibility and good service design by default. Now, that is not a natural state for us currently at the University of Sheffield. So in two years time, when my team come and talk to you about this, then I'll know that, that that's been successful. But at the moment, talking to my team and to stakeholders across the university is where we're starting. But that should be the norm in a few years. I've already emphasised that I don't want this to be a legislative afterthought. I think if that happens, then we're back in the GDPR. Um, one of the things I did want to ask um, 
was what actually are the penalties? One of the real benefits of GDPR was the size of the fine. <laughs> the size of the fine was really useful to focus people's minds. So if you've got stick with the fine on one side, and then the carrot of, but it's this brave new world of wonderful inclusive design on the other side, does kind of focus the mind. So that might be something that I focus on. But the, the, what we really want to achieve at the end of this is encouraging everyone across the university that creates pretty much the same amount of content that Edinburgh have. We don't have the stats with us, but they're basically ours as well, um, to consider the full range of their users. And that shouldn't just be about disability either. It should be, everyone's talked about it, how people consume content, things that would enable one student to get out of bed in the morning, but not feel like they could in the, in, uh, the next day, and to consider the full range of, of how that might impact. But that to be easy too, it shouldn't be that there's a list of what might my students be feeling in the morning um, that they have to think about when designing their uh, curricula. So, um, I think I've pretty, pretty much talked about all of these. The, the physical and digital experience, I think, do need to converge, and that's one of the things that strategically I think we need to talk about, because there is the lecture theatre experience, but then there is around campus how um, some of the um, shared uh, classrooms that we're building, we've got a new STEM centre, so we need to think about usability in that as well. And the other critical thing is everyone's G'd up because of Monday. What happens after Monday? So how are Steve and I and all of our colleagues going to actually do what we've planned to do? We're going to do all of this stuff that I've talked about and I'm really excited about, but actually how are we going to get that done and not lose interest when we run out of impetus, when those deadlines are over and nothing's happened and the world hasn't exploded like the GDPR. So, so I think that's the real challenge and that's one of the things that I just wanted to finish on, which is we really wanted to come today to learn from you guys. So if you have got anything based on that, uh, that we could learn from, you know, how do we keep impetus, that type of stuff, then please uh, put your hand up before I have to run from a train. Thanks very much. Anything else for you, Steve? That's good, cheers. Thanks.